So folks, one of the things you obviously know that I'm doing in my personal portfolio is moving cash around, right? Cash is no longer trash. I am looking for ways to get yield as a weight for the real estate bargains that I expect in the commercial real estate market. To that end, we've been talking with Taylor from Life Goal Investments for about a year now. And I just wanted to uh, let him know that I bought a thousand shares of one of his ETFs, Wealth. Uh, and now I want to beat on him a little bit and ask him what the hell I bought. So, uh, so you don't know <laughs> yeah, exactly, but I knew I was talking to you Monday. So I'm like, I'm going to ask him. So I was wondering what, what does the portfolio look like? You've, you've intrigued me this year talking about a balanced portfolio, bonds, stocks, commodities. It's not something I find kind of active management in ETF. So, uh, I plunked down some money and, um, uh, so now you get to tell me what, what we're looking at in the portfolio today. Without, what the heck did I buy? Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What the heck? I bought it because now I down. appreciate the the, uh, the ability to kind of talk through it. Um, so yeah, so every one of the the ETFs that we run at Life Goal Investments have a combination of not just stocks, but bonds, commodities, and particularly gold and real estate, all embedded with them within one single ETF. So it's really a good way to have that easy button kind of multi asset approach. It's similar to what you would see a financial advisor build a client that has a million dollars or $10 million. Right. And candidly, that's what I did prior to this role. I was an advisor consultant. So I would go around and work with clients that have $10 million and formulate right. that perfect portfolio. And we said like, listen, we can do that for anybody that has $10, which is what the ETF shares are priced at, right at the $10 ballpark on a brokerage platform, Robinhood, Fidelity, mm -hmm. Schwab, whatever it is. So yeah, so what we do is, is, is over time, we're trying to take the volatility of the stock market and truncate it. We right. want you to have exposure to stocks. So like within wealth that you bought there, WLTH, the exposure to stock right now is about 55% of that portfolio. When you say now, you're meaning this morning, just so. this Yep, this morning is about 55%. Okay. And as you know, as we've talked back and forth a lot and your stance kind of seems similar to ours, we're not all that constructive on the economic outlook. Correct. So we do have the ability to take that portfolio up to 80% stocks. Okay. So again, right now we've shifted it downwards because again, we want the portfolio to be a little bit more defensive as the economic data looks like it's slowing across the board. So if the upside is 80% stocks, do you have a lower bound or you don't? We're pretty much at the lower bound right now. Okay. Yeah. So All right. there's no hard and fast lower bound to what the stock exposure can be, but I don't envision it getting much lower than it is right now. And okay. and Candidly, what that says is we're not all that optimistic on the outlook, right? <laughs> See video say. number one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. So, so fifty-five percent in stocks, um, forty okay. percent in bonds, and both okay. of these. So, you, you're not just getting the S and P five hundred when you get the stock exposure. You're getting a broad-based subset of individual stocks, and then also some ETFs that can you, get us. Can, I don't know if it's allowed. If you tell me it's not allowed, I, I understand. Yeah, can you tell me what the largest individual stock is in the portfolio? Yep, you the largest individual oh. stock is an interesting one. It's Newmont Mining, Ooh, and so gold one miner. of the okay. reasons one of the reasons that we have that is we want the gold exposure inside the portfolio. Oh. Gold does really well in two scenarios. It does really well in an inflationary scenario, and it also does really well in a recessionary scenario historically. Mm -hmm. And so if we can tick both those boxes with a Newmont Mining, and the reason we take the individual stock exposure as opposed to taking it inside of, you know. A gold ETF or something like that is it's it's a lot cheaper. You know, you can buy sure. that that Numa mining for no expense ratio. Um, so that's the largest individual holding. And then um, yeah, so about 55% stocks, and then about 40% is gonna be in bonds, and that's broad-based bonds. You're gonna get things like treasuries in there, you're gonna get things like tips in there, you're gonna get things like corporates in there, you're gonna get things like emerging. Do you know the average bonds. duration? Or do you know that? Yep, yeah. And so what's interesting here is uh, so we're going to get a little nerdy here, but that's okay. Um, like what we have is we run a portfolio that's generally longer duration. Um, okay. and the reason that we run a longer duration portfolio is when you come across economic slowdowns, recessionary times, that is a harbinger for strong protection, right? Duration okay, yeah. is usually something that does well in a tough economic environment. And what we're trying to do with this wealth portfolio as a whole is create that all weather tire. Right. right. So something that holds right. up well during a recession. So the duration does well there, et cetera. And so because we have duration inside the portfolio on the fixed income side, on the bond side, we mm. also tend on the stock side to lean more towards value than we do mm. growth because Makes growth sense. stocks 
have a ton of duration embedded in them as well. You'll see mm -hmm. when rates rise, growth stocks sell off. Right. And when rates rise, bonds also sell off. So you can't have duration on both sides of the coin there. Makes You've sense. got to diversify as a whole there. And then the remaining 5% is an outright commodity exposure and predominantly gold. And again, we like gold in this environment for twofold, to reiterate what I already said, because recessionary times and inflationary times, gold has historically been a really good performer there. And so the intention of the portfolio as a whole with wealth is to be that long-term wealth creator over time, but it's meant to do it with a less volatile profile than that of stocks. So when you look at volatility, you look at standard deviation. That's how you measure volatility when it comes to investments. My mother was a, a statistics professor, so I'm real familiar with that. But anyway, what <laughs> we've done is we've created about a 40% lower volatility profile than that of the S&P 500. So we'd like to think that we can compete with the S&P 500 over time, and we're going to do it with 40% less volatility than the S&P 500. And when you look back to the inception of the product, which we go back to 2021 in September, we are almost exactly the same performance of the S&P 500. We've mm -hmm. outperformed the Bloomberg Barclays Ag, which is the bond index, and we've outperformed global stocks as well. So you know, if you look at a combination of stocks and bonds, which is predominantly what this is, and we're outperforming across the board there, it's been a really strong, uh, a really strong risk adjusted return for sure. Right. So this, this is again, why I chose wealth. You obviously have a couple of more. This is, uh, and again, I think I selected reinvest dividends. I assume that's part of the ETF, right? So yep. again, yep. instead of yeah, taking so a distribution, I'll just get more shares. You'll take that. Yeah. Right now it's about 3.8% yield. So you'll take that and you'll just roll it back in over time. And unless, you know, some people take the distribution that are investors in it. Most people don't. They're just looking for the actual investment returns at the end of the day and they reinvest. But uh, yeah, and some people, we do have a few people that are like, hey, we want to live off this income. We're, right. you know, getting closer to retirement or whatever it is. And then they stream the three or 4% and yeah. on their way. Yeah, the, the reason I chose this, uh, you know, obviously I looked at some others is kind of both sides. Right, I can get the dividend and some stock exposure. I am very encouraged to hear that you're at 55% stocks, kind of the lower bound. Uh, obviously, in video one, you know where I kind of stand on the economy. I don't, I don't feel good. Uh, it's also good to know that when we get to where the bottom is with your 10 years of stock experience, you know the market. You know the stocks turn long before the market, so sure. it'll be fun to watch this this change. And maybe I'll I'll check in with this every 90 days or something. And Put your feet to the fire and see what's going on. Please, please hold them there because, uh, you know, the one nice thing is like, it's funny as, as we do this and, and we're involved in social media online and, and people talk all the time about what they're buying and selling and stuff. And we always sit back and laugh because we're like, okay, you're going to tell us what you're buying and selling. You aren't going to report the losers. Yeah, and then exactly. hours at the end of the day, like we can't report anything but the entire, you know, the right. entire dinner, the entire recipe. It's all there. It's reported every single day. The performance is out every day. Every day you can look at what we held versus the day before. It changes online every single day. So it's like there's no hiding what we've done yeah. here. It's out there. So if you want to come at us and say you we did X, Y, Z, look at the data. It is what yeah, it does. So uh where would somebody go look for what uh what's in the portfolio? It sounds like we could do it daily. I you can do, you can do, do it literally every single day. It takes about an hour at the end of the day and our data provider loops it in the back end of our website, but our website's oh, okay. lifegoalinvestments.com. And so you'll see there, if there are any changes made in the portfolio, in the portfolio throughout the day, um, you'll see them updated there. And then you'll obviously see via market movements, sure. the percentages of XYZ will have changed regardless Absolutely. of whether it was bought or sold that day based on market returns. Yep, there you go. This is gonna be fun to watch. I got some skin in the game now, so now I'm now I I'm, love it. <laughs> now I'm committed, not only interested. So uh, where where we can people we, follow you? Yeah, go we ahead. appreciate that. So so follow information on the ETFs on our website, lifegoalinvestments.com. And then what we're doing on social media is just more broad based education, talking about the economy, the stock market, etc. And that's follow us at Life Goal Investments both on Instagram and on TikTok is is where we're putting other data. Do me a favor, folks. If you go follow him today, just say hi. Say you came from one rental at a time so he knows this. So many people value. have done so. Thank Yay! you, Michael. I love my audience. They're <laughs> wonderful. Thanks, buddy. They are.